was open to the media, while his backup, Cooper Rush, played a good game in his absence. I want you to listen to what Jerry Jones said he's rooting for yesterday. Wouldn't it be something if you had a dilemma as to uh, which way you go? You do that if he gets 10 wins. Same thing that happened with Prescott. I think like that. So you'd want that? You'd want that controversy? Of course I would. Okay. Of course that means we'd want that. If it comes in there and played as well as Prescott played, Rush played that well over these next games ahead, I'd walk New York to get there. <laughs> I love that, man. Love oh, that. God bless him. This is the greatest thing of all time. I don't even know what to say. I'm a talk show host, and he's better at this than I am. He's, I don't have to ask a question. RC, he's rooting for a quarterback controversy. What do we make of that? He's better at this. Bro, it's like dude wakes up and says, what's the most outlandish thing no. I could say to F up my team this morning? And then he just <laughs> picks something. And that's, that's what it. he picked this time. Bro, that's not nobody it, wants that. And also, too, also, too, like, I don't like the fact that you've been calling him Dak the last five years and now all of a sudden he's Prescott like we don't know who the hell number four is that plays for the Dallas Cowboys like Jerry Jones like he don't like peace you know what I mean like there's always that guy man that's walking around and he's like man I just want peace you know I just want to find somebody in my life that just lets me be me man and just allows me to flourish and then they're the most toxic human in the entire world that's Jerry Jones bro Jerry Jones walks around like he wants a championship but he doesn't. He just wants to be talked about like he wants a championship. You don't want a quarterback controversy. Ain't no way you want to pay a dude $140 million and then have a dude that's a backup and now you got to figure out which one of them you want to start. Yes, you want Cooper Rush to play well, but what you should be saying is we want Cooper Rush to play well enough for somebody else to want him to be their starting quarterback because we already have ours. This is ridiculous. It is, this, but Danny, you know what he's doing. Look, this is Jerry, right? He's on his yacht, right? He's got his feet up. He's got a line in the water, and he's reeling it in. Oh, it's get up. I got, I got, like, they're going to talk about the Cowboys tomorrow. Again. He is, Jerry Jones is always doing one specific thing. Sell. 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 That Sell. is what he is doing. This is great. Now, fundamentally, yes. Like, it would Cooper, if Cooper Rush plays well enough that they win all their games in the meantime, that's ideal for Jerry because he wants to win the game. But, no, man, there's no quarterback <laughs> controversy here. Look at the look at the paychecks. Like, hey, I mean, no. It's just can I say even, one thing real quick? Yeah. No one. Asked, no one asked Jerry Jones this question. No. He didn't have a plan. Like he, this is an improv. So he just went up to the reporters and said, "Hey, let me say something." No yeah. one asked, "Hey, should there be this a conference?" Be fun. Is there? He, yeah, that's literally what he did. <laughs> it wasn't a planned press conference. Wasn't anything. He just brought that up. And wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if? Ain't nobody asked you, Jerry Jones. Look, it's it's I, I think I can prove that Dan is right. Nick, let me just put one thing on the screen, and then and then we'll. Do it. I can prove that Dan is right because if he had said what Mike McCarthy said, which is infinitely less interesting but more logical, we wouldn't be talking about it. McCarthy <laughs> said, Dak is our quarterback and we want Cooper to be as successful as possible. I think it stops right there. That's the obvious reality it's of the true. situation. It's true, but infinitely less interesting. <laughs> Absolutely. And we would right now be talking more about <laughs> Russell Wilson or we'd be talking about Aaron Rodgers or we'd be talking about somebody else instead of how about them Cowboys? Go ahead, Ninko. What what happened yesterday in at the meeting at 6 a.m.? Remember when I was sitting there and I said, what if, what if Cooper Rush wins? And you said, no, 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 we're not even going to get it. Well, now Jerry Jones is saying we, we want a little controversy here. We want Cooper Rush. We want him to come in here, win 10 games, and then we'll have ourselves a little issue here. I was exactly surprised. Right. I'm like, maybe I put that in his head. Maybe I put that in <laughs> yeah. his head. Maybe he thought about that. Maybe well, let's that was take like, everybody behind the scenes. I, what Ninko was talking about, I, I want everyone to know what he's talking about. In our pre-show meeting yesterday, he brought up the idea, hey, what if Cooper Rush continues to play well and there's a quarterback controversy in Dallas? And I actually said, that's far too crazy to even bring up. Yep. Jerry Jones has just raised a possibility that a talk show host who would do anything to talk about the Cowboys <laughs> deemed too crazy to be worth discussing on the show. The That's what the owner of the team just did. RC, he is out greeny greeny when it comes to the Cowboys. That's what Jerry Jones has done, RC. Hey, 
Hey, yeah. hey, I'm gonna say this. This is the this is the best week you've had in a long time, Greeny. <laughs> First off, the Dallas Cowboys win, right? So we get to keep doing get up. Then the Jets <laughs> actually win a game in a great comeback in Cleveland. And fast forward to the end of the week, and Jerry Jones gift wraps this for you. I know you were sad at first when you saw we didn't even have anything to talk about on the first rundown that Pete did. And that's why Pete's eyebrows were looking down like this on the call. I never heard him talk that much in the morning. That's how pissed off he is about the first rundown because Jerry did this. And he's right. Yeah, Jerry had a line. And I know Dan said a line in the water. I'm not sure that's all it was. Jerry Jones is tripping, y'all. Jerry Jones is doing way too much right now for a team that actually doesn't need it. Just let them be. But for you, Greeny, this week had to be like Christmas. Oh, it's a dream. It's a dream come true. It's exactly right. No, he is he is just the, the, the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, by the way, Nico, are they going to win? Are they going to beat the, the Giants? Everyone in this, everywhere I go in this town, people are walking up to me, Greeny, the Giants, the Giants, the Giants. Who's winning that game? We, we, we'll do picks on Monday. But, Nico, who's winning that game Monday night, the Cowboys or the Giants? The Giants. The no, Giants. Get out of here. No, <laughs> the the Giants. They're going to run the football. Yes, the Giants are going to win. They're going to use Barkley. They're going to run the ball. They're going to set the tone early. And I don't think Cooper Rush is going to have as good of a game as he did week two. That's what I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. If, if Cooper Rush was playing for the Giants, they might have a better chance. I'm not 100%. I'm not sure he wouldn't be the best know each other well from their days in the NFC West. Of course, it is Russell who's made the jump to the AFC. And now they take on San Francisco. Broncos were just awful last week. Booed loudly at home in a game that they won of the Texans 16-9. to This will be a very different circumstance, a different challenge, and it's a standalone Sunday night game. Russell Wilson, uh, week one, 340 yards last week, under 50% passing with an interception through two games. The Broncos offense has scored just two touchdowns with six field goals. It, it, look, we have sat here and we have talked at great length about Nathaniel Hackett. He has been the most talked about head coach in the NFL so far. RC, should we be talking in Denver at least a little bit about the quarterback? How much of these struggles needs to go at the doorstep of Russell Wilson? I think a lot of those struggles go at the doorstep of Russell Wilson. Listen, when Russell Wilson was winning his, his, his playoff games, it was because he had a top five defense in Seattle. Russell Wilson didn't necessarily do that when he was the focal point of this team and this offense and we were screaming, let Russ cook. Now you get him in Denver. You're not only trading for Russell Wilson, the football player who throws the pretty deep ball. You're trading for Russell Wilson who's been in impact situation, who's, understand, who's understood critical football moments and transitional moments in the game and we haven't seen that from him he hasn't gotten this team better in the red zone because he hasn't gotten better in 22 snaps 18 called passes and you don't have any touchdowns to show for it in the red zone Russell Wilson should, should be a guy that's helping bring Nathaniel Hackett along we expect Nathaniel Hackett to struggle at least a little bit early at his new job we don't expect Russell Wilson to struggle at his new job and his new job isn't just about making plays on the foot Football field. It's about leading. It's about coaching. It's about teaching. It's about making guys believe you can win. When Tom Brady went to Tampa, that immediately happened. They immediately said, we got a dude. I don't necessarily know what the guys in Denver are saying, we got a dude. Well, that, that's really what it's about. No one has ever questioned Russell Wilson's talent. There have been questions, Ninko, about his leadership. That is what Ryan is touching on here. Ninko, how do you see that? Yeah, RC, I, I, I can't say it any better than what RC just elaborated. You want your quarterback to basically be the, the torch leader for the rest of the team. Everyone wants to follow that guy. And, and I can only speak from my experiences with Tom. He was a true leader, and you can see that when he was with the Patriots. Then he went to Tampa. He's a true leader. People follow him. They want to be with him. They want to listen to Tom. They want to be coached by Tom. And, you know, you hear the reports of Russell Wilson having his own office and kind of beating to the beat of his own drum and doing things differently. Well, that doesn't really work in a team setting. You have to 
go through the grind of everything that everyone else is doing. That's why in the military, everyone, you know, you lose your hairdo, you go in, you lose your name, you go through boot camp and train, and that's just like training camp. You go in and you do the hard things together to where everyone looks at each other like, hey, I'm doing it for him, he's doing it for me. We have each other's back here. So if Russell can't be the leader, you paid him to be the leader and the best quarterback to lead your team, then this team isn't going to go anywhere, and they're not going to win, and they're not going to be what everyone expected them to be. Is this fair, Dan? I, I, and when you hear all this, so. is, is this reasonable? Yeah, he's the one who got the big contract. He's the one that they traded for. I mean, I think RC's point about how you know Hackett is new and, and needs to be picked up by his veteran quarterback is completely legitimate. Look, the, the entire operation right now on offense looks like a mess. They can't get the play in on time. It's penalties. It's all yeah. that. And, and you know, mm -hmm. if it keeps up. <laughs> Russell's not the one whose seat's going to be hot. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, like that'll fall on the head coach, uh, no matter whose fault it actually is. That's just the way of these things. But, th I mean, look, I, I think they'll get it together. My understanding is Russell has a lot of input in how this offense is designed and operated on game day. And right now it's just not going smoothly uh, for whatever reason. I think at some point it will get better. But the question is, you're in the AFC West with all these monster teams and all these great quarterbacks. Like, how much damage are you doing to your chances in the meantime while, thing while you're struggling to get it together? To be clear, that was a game I'm not sure how many people watched last week. Broncos, Texans up against a lot of other. The home fans are counting yeah. down the seconds yeah. on the play That's clock for their good. own team. This this week, everyone's going to see it. It's a Sunday night standalone game against a really good defense in San Francisco. What do you think, Sach? Yeah, I think San Francisco definitely has the edge for sure, uh, number one. Number two, I'll just push back on the, on the piece about, man, being a unit and team and all one haircut. I mean, Tom Brady missed, missed training camp, so that's the thing that happened. Aaron Rodgers isn't necessarily this unit team rallying around guys, so that's another thing. And so, I, I mean, I, I understand that point, but there is another side of there are different ways to lead. Now, is Russell Wilson doing it right now? No. I, is Nathaniel Hackett doing it right now? No. But also to the point of, hey, I'm a rookie head coach and you need to be brought along. Mike McDaniel looks really, really good right now sure as a does. rookie head coach yeah. as well. And so, I think there's more nuance to the situation. Denver's defense has some question marks with the first year coordinator I think that needs to be talked about as well but Russell Wilson for sure needs to be better every game we've put on the screen so far everyone likes the same team I'm not yeah. exactly <laughs> sure we got to keep track of how this